A couple of weeks ago, my parents and I went to see It out of town, about an hour away from where we live. It's a nicer theater, so it was a great place to see the film. Since Dad and I had been wanting to see it for months, we had gone to the 10.30pm showing as close to midnight as we could. Afterwards, my parents and I went to the nearby Walmart to pick up some cards for my grandfather's birthday party and some lemon juice. I don't know why my dad needed lemon juice, but whatever. It's somewhat important to the story. We entered Walmart at about 12.45 a.m. The place was nearly devoid of life. A few teens roamed the aisles and I recognized a woman from the It showing. Other than that, the place was eerily quiet and rather lifeless. Dad sped off to the food section while Mom and I made our way to the cards. She said she and Dad had already gotten cards and that she was going to look at purses while I hunted for a birthday card. I nodded, watched her walk away, and looked at the cards alone in the aisle. I got the feeling that I was being watched and thought it was just because I had seen it and had set me on edge. I kept expecting Pennywise to meander around the corner and lure me in with a smile. Instead, I got something potentially worse. A man looking in his 40s, though he had the weathered face of a drug user and could have been 30, came into the aisle. I was hoping that he was just there for a card and would pick up what he needed and leave. He said hello. I said hello and turned away pretending to be very immersed in the card section hoping to convey that I wasn't in any mood to talk. I ignored him. I did not look at him, but out of the corner of my eye I could see him moving closer. I stepped away. Birthday card for my grandpa. How old is he going to be? 82. I picked up the card, pretended to read it, looking out of the corner of my eye for my mom. Surely if she could see me, she'd come back. I know I'm 21, but she had said that she wouldn't be very far away. He whistled. I looked up and down with wide eyes. I felt filthy and dirty and wanted to wash my hands just being near him. I had a grandma. She was 83. I looked after her, you know. We got along real well. I nodded. Still didn't look at him. Yeah. I took real good care of her. He stepped closer, leaving only two or three feet between us. No one else had come by, leaving us alone in the aisle. I bet your granddaddy loves you. Uh-huh. He stared at me. I could feel his eyes bore holes through my leggings as he took my thighs in. I bet your granddaddy's little princess. You're a princess, all right. Um, sure, something like that. Why was I still talking? Why was he still here? Where was my mother? I know I shouldn't rely on that, and she won't always be there, but since she was nearby, couldn't she swoop in? We stood in silence for a while, me frantically looking for a nice card, trying to ignore the strange, heavily breathing man standing next to me. Eventually he spoke again, even though I'm certain my body language was screaming for him to just go away. What made you decide to cut your hair so short? He smiled at me when I glanced at him and behind him, looking for my mom. Tired of being long, I guess. I had read nearly every card on the shelf and picked up one that I liked. I was going to use it as my excuse to leave, but he stepped closer and was looking at the cards just left of mine. Is that your natural color? No, but I was beyond caring to be polite. Sure. It sure is nice. He stared at me, and I could see his eyes traveling down my chest. I like that shirt, too. Huh? Even though part of me was scolding myself for not being nice, the other part of me was trying to formulate an escape route to find either my mom or dad. Yeah, he purred. That shirt is nice on you. Just the kind of thing a little princess like you needs to wear. Flowers and butterflies. That sweet little girl stuff. By this time, I was on a cusp of a panic attack. I told him I needed to go, but he insisted he was going to help me find a good card for my granddaddy. I said I was fine, said I was good, but...
but he insisted, whispering under his breath, I want to help you. You are so attractive. I'm attracted to you. That was it. I stepped back, and without looking at him, I said, I am going to look in the next aisle, okay? Okay, baby doll. I sprinted into the next aisle, down it, and through the shoe section, trying to hold back my tears and vomit as I hunted for my parents. When I found my mom, I collapsed into her arms and told her everything. She tried to joke it off, but my panic attack had finally hit me, and I wasn't in the mood to joke. In my mind, I was too interactions away from being kidnapped. In my mind, he had already dragged me into his truck and drove me away, telling me what a precious little girl I was. I asked my mom if we could leave now, and she texted my dad to hurry his ass up. Dad finally met up with us. Mom relayed what happened, and we checked out and exited the store. I felt as if the man was going to be just behind me, waiting to grab me, but he was nowhere in the store just outside. We exited, and there he was, sitting on a bench just outside the door. His eyes lit up, recognizing me, and I immediately hid on the other side of my dad, staring at the ground. I heard him speak. We made it to the car, and thankfully the man did not follow. My heart was in my throat, and it was a good twenty minutes before I could speak again. My parents shared a meaningful silence while I sniffled and dried my eyes in the back seat. We all were thinking the same thing. If they hadn't been there, what would have happened? The man had been waiting outside the door. What would he have done to me had I not been able to get away? None of the answers were good ones. I used to work at one of those 24-7 Walmart super centers. I was right out of high school and worked as a cashier for two terrible years where I was subjected to all kinds of abuse from customers and co-workers alike. I mean, I was screamed at, slammed into a register face first, groped, and even farted on once because this old lady was mad that the oranges were priced each and not by the pound. However, the time that sticks out in my mind the most is the time that a customer tried to follow me home. I had just started my shift, and the second I got on the register, I had a line about 10 people long. For some reason, the Walmart I worked at never had enough registers open, so people were usually really mad and impatient by the time they got to me. I get right to work and keep a smile plastered on my face while making the minimal mandatory small talk. Most customers were polite but not very interested in talking, so it's easy to fall into a bit of a cashier robot mode. I get this one guy who had only two items, yogurt and band-aids. I ring it all up in record time and neatly bag it up, but the customer doesn't seem to be paying any attention. He wouldn't look at me or answer my greetings. He would just stare at the conveyor belt. Maybe he was a bit zoned out. The conveyor belt didn't look too dirty. I hadn't had a chance to wash it yet because the second I'd walk over to the register people lined up. I tell the man his total which is something like $4.36 and he starts fishing in his pockets for exact change without looking up. Inwardly I groan but I keep a fake smile on my face while I wait. He is wearing one of those muddy brown denim jackets with lots of pockets. And as he rifles through, I keep catching whiffs of stale B.O. and cigarettes. His hands were pretty dirty too, and all dried from the cold weather. He dumps out an assortment of change on the counter, still not looking at me, and I begin to count it up. Everything is uncomfortably quiet. I can feel the eyes of every customer waiting in line boring into me. I let him know that he is 30 cents short. He then looks up at me, making this scrunched up face, his eyes very dark brown, almost black, and they pierce right through me accusedly as he thought I was lying or something. While he was watching, I counted everything. It's only 30 cents, can't you give me your employee discount? No, that is against the rules, I answer apologetically. Want to put something back? I wasn't about to get fired for giving someone my discount. He wasn't the first person to ask for it, but most people pretended that they were joking. He was not joking. 
No, I want them, he said, glaring at me. I was beginning to wish that he'd stare at the conveyor belt again instead of at me. He was making me pretty uncomfortable. If I'd had the 30 cents in my pocket, I would have paid for it myself just to get this guy to leave. He reaches over to take the bag, but I turned the little bag carousel so that he cannot. I know you get a discount. Just plug it in. He completely blows up at this point, but I just shake my head and look at the other customers. People are watching, but no one does anything. This is just something that's inconveniencing them, even though I was actually pretty scared. I'd already started flashing my register light so that the CSM would come but they were notorious for taking their sweet time. The man goes on about how it's not that much and that he needs it. He leaves before the supervisor comes over, grabbing all of his change and shoving it into one of his pockets before stomping off. I am relieved that he is gone and continue working in uneasy silence. Everything seems to be normal. My shift ends at midnight and I manage to clock out on time for once. I didn't have a car and would normally call my mom to come pick me up, but she was out of town and it was too late to call anyone else, so I decided to walk rather than waste money on a cab. I lived about 20 minutes away and felt pretty safe walking because you didn't really tend to run into other pedestrians at that hour. After a few minutes of walking, I noticed a car was driving really slowly behind me. The speed limit was 45 miles per hour. This car was probably going about 10. I had a bad feeling and walked a little faster while trying to rationalize it. It could have been someone who wanted to offer me a ride or get directions, but no. Whoever it was stayed right behind me and did not try to pull up next to me at all. After a few minutes of this, the car finally turns off and into one of the neighborhoods. I was relieved. I was relieved, but it was short-lived. The driver parks his car on the curb and gets out of his car, then goes jogging up to me. I realize immediately that it was Yogurt Band-Aid guy. He's wearing the same sort of muddy brown jacket and is staring at me with his dark eyes. I turn around and start jogging down the sidewalk and he starts jogging up right next to me. I can actually hear the chains jiggling in his pocket. He doesn't say anything at first, so I just try to run faster without slipping. Had this guy been sitting in the parking lot for hours waiting for me to get off of work, apparently so. I feel him staring at me and turn my head to look at him while still running as fast as I can on the ice. What color is your underwear, he asked. This question horrified and disgusted me. Don't be a creep. I punch him right in the face. It hurt my hand like a bitch. But he stops running for a second and bends forward a bit, clutching his face. When I finally made it home, probably an hour later, I went to my landlord's apartment first and told her about what had happened. I was really shaken up and I told her that if she saw a suspicious guy around the building, she should call the police. My mom was out of town and did not answer my calls, so I watched Disney movies until I was calm enough to go to sleep. The next day I told the managers at work what had happened, but they didn't care. In hindsight I probably should have called the police, but I was young and I thought that if it was necessary management would have told me to do it. I felt pretty angry that they did not take me very seriously or care that I was scared. I wanted to go home early because I was scared that the guy would show up, but they told me no and made me go back to work on the registers. I quit shortly after that. I never did see Yogurt Band-Aid guy again, but it's been about 10 years and I'm not even sure I'd recognize him even if I did. Even so, Yogurt Band-Aid guy, let's not meet again. This story took place a few months back. I am a teenage boy and my mom used to work 2 to 10 p.m., meaning I'd be alone all day after school. We had just recently moved into a duplex, which was within walking distance of a Walmart. I would quite often go for walks, preferably at night. I would often walk through the apartment complex parking lot, which was located pretty much right next to my place. It was about 8pm and I was hungry. 
My mom had left me some cash in case of this, as there wasn't anything to eat in the house. It was about the time I usually went for my walk, so I figured I'd make a stop by Walmart while on my journey and get a snack. I made my way to Walmart. It was dark by now, and I had made my way inside. I went and got a bag of beef jerky and began just walking around the store as I was bored and got lonely sitting at the house all day. So I liked to go out of the house. As I walked I eventually decided I didn't want the beef jerky anymore and threw it into one of the aisles with other items. I came to the conclusion that I wasn't going to buy anything and headed for the exit. As I was about to approach the sliding door leading to the parking lot I heard a man say, excuse me. I turned around and saw a man, probably in his 30s, wearing a sweatshirt, jeans, and he asked me if I knew where the beef jerky I threw was. He claimed that he needed to have all items in the store back in their original places for customer satisfactory. At the time, I was not sensing anything off. I'm a teenager and I guess I'm pretty gullible and didn't want to get in trouble. I told the man I wasn't sure, but I could go look for it and put it back where it belonged. I began to look and he followed. At first he was next to me, but eventually he slowed down and was kind of split up. I looked back and I saw him behind me. I kept walking and looked back yet again, but this time he was gone. I wasn't in the mood for this shit and took this time to leave. As I left, I looked behind me and I saw him walking the opposite direction behind me. I don't think he knew where he was, so I speed walked out of there and walked home. I looked behind me as I walked and never saw anyone following me. By that point I had suspected something was up. Nothing ever became of it and I forgot all about it. I am just now recalling it. The whole thing just strikes me as weird. I'd actually seen the guy walking around before he talked to me, browsing in one of the aisles. The fact that he knew where I put the beef jerky somewhere means he obviously seen me take it and followed me until I decided to dump it. He obviously didn't work there, and he was not in uniform. He also had his phone in his hand the entire time, although I can't really figure out what his intentions were. Seeing as well, it was Walmart, a very public place. Looking back, I wish I would have questioned the situation more, and asked if he had worked there, and asked one of the employees if they knew him. But I suppose it all worked out, because I had made my escape, and all is well now. If you guys have any insight as to what the hell happened, please let me know. Perhaps he was legit and I am just dumb and I am missing something. Or maybe he had other plans. When I was 18, I got a job at Walmart. Small town. Small town. Not much else there for someone fresh out of high school. I'd been there about a month and worked in the jewelry department. Usually, from mid-afternoon until the department closed at 9 p.m. I would close the department myself, but, obviously, Walmart is open 24 hours, so other people were always around. One night, I'm locking the cases up and putting things away, and an overnight stalker walks by and says hi. I look up, smile, and say hi back, then go about my business. This guy... The only way I can describe him is to say he looks like one of the BGs. Shoulder length, fizzy hair, kind of a bouncy hop to his step when he walked mid 50s. This started to become a regular thing. On nights I closed by myself, he'd walk by and say hi. And I'd say hi back. That's it. No conversation ever took place. Then on my birthday, a few of my friends who worked there got me a cake and I hugged them and said thank you, etc. About an hour later, Mr. Bee Gees comes around with a birthday card and gave it to my manager to give to me. My manager thought it was extremely funny that this weirdo got me a card until I opened it. Happy birthday. I saw you hugging those guys earlier. It made me really mad, but I called a friend and talked it out, and he made me realize you are allowed to have friends other than me. Just please don't hug them anymore. Save those hugs for me. I don't know what kind of emotion showed on my face, but my manager grabbed the card and read it, then walked me back to the store manager's office and showed it to him. 
The store manager said that he was obviously joking, but he would have a talk with him about it. I didn't see Mr. BG's for around a week, until one night, when I was closing, he plunked down a stuffed envelope on my counter as he walked by without a word. Inside was six pages front to back of pure crazy. It was basically his entire life story, all about his family and schools he went to, but weird stuff like how his sister was a psychic and how his father was an exorcist and all sorts of weirdness. The end of the letter was about how his friend was 18 months old and he knew that something bad was happening because he could hear her screaming his name in his dreams. So this also went to the store manager and he had and he had me write a written complaint and he told me not to go outside by myself and not to wander near where the guy might be while I'm out on my breaks. Um, no, get rid of him. Two nights later, I was finishing up for the night and the way the counter is set up, there is opening and the way the counter is set up is one opening and the counters go all the way around both sides. He brought a handcart around with boxes for my department into the only opening in the counters. So I was trapped inside. He just stood there and stared at me while I looked at him with what I'm sure, with what I'm sure was terror. I was then, and still am now, riddled with anxiety. I don't like confrontation and the last thing I wanted was for this weirdo to confront me about me reporting him. Twice he whispers, sorry, didn't mean to scare you. I turned around and started finishing my closing tasks, pretending he wasn't there even though I could feel him watching me. After a few minutes, I just looked at him and said, weren't you told to stay away from me? He gave me this gross predator grin and said, he asked me if I was joking and I told him I was. Then he leaned in as close as he could get with the counter between us and whispered, but I'm not joking. Then he walked away. For two weeks after that, he would randomly show up Wherever I was, I would leave for lunch. He would be there, even non-work places. I would go to the mall. He would be there. Another department manager told me he had been reported by four other people over the last two years for very similar behavior. I again went to my store manager, who told me the guy was harmless and maybe had a little bit of a crush. He was in his 50s. I was 18 or 19 during this shit. A week later I gave my notice and quit. He still works there, 13 years later. Still gives me the heebie-jeebies.